So, uh, today I'm going to discuss a little bit about how we can investigate the performer or performance of individual testers. That's sometimes not something that you are comfortable speaking about, but I still think it's very useful for research, the research we would like to do in project number 30. And uh, but there are good, good ways, I think, to handle this that can, even though it might be a little bit sensitive, uh, be an asset for for us in Software Center and the companies. So, uh, what we are doing, dealing about, is to find causes and remedies for flaky tests. And uh, some work we have done so far is that we have the multi-factor flaky test detector that looks at uh, different factors trying to predict uh, flaky tests that can be traceback coverage, test smells, flakiness frequency, test size, are the things we are currently investigating. Uh, we also have started working with using static analysis tools to create, uh, to try to find among all the warnings you can have, but apply that on test code to see if that can predict flaky tests or other low quality problems with the, with the test cases. Uh, and we're also part of a project of cognitive aspects of test case design, uh, where, where the investigators look into different biases you can have when you design testing and also to adapt uh, current tools for the strategy switching uh, mode of working that we have documented that that testers normally use. And the main contacts for these are multi-factor test detector is Azim Ahmad at LIO. We have Sean Mann at MDH for the static analysis. And finally, we have Edward Paul Enoui, we normally just say Eddie. Uh, that is working together with other researchers uh, outside Software Center also uh, with these cognitive aspects of test case design. Uh, so that's good. We are trying to find ways of how we can avoid flakiness, remedy it and work. But it would of course be nice if we knew a lot of the factors. And uh, my experience at least is that it's very hard to explain uh, the variance of quality by just looking at external things such as uh, metrics, structure and others. Uh, if you remember back in the 90s, there were a lot of uh, uh, experiments about how to make uh, software inspections more efficient and uh, still that research more or less failed in thinking about the psychology part. There were articles about that later that made the field become a little bit sober, talking about the expertise of the involved and other things. Uh, we also see in all this, I've done the mistakes myself, all these investigations about how to predict uh, fault prone uh, modules by using data from the UML models. Fairly good results were reported. I think we came up to explain roughly about 70% of the variance using that. But uh, I think the same applies now. There is more to look into than the things we are investigating now. And uh, just hypothesize. Maybe I'm totally wrong and it would be nice to, to prove that this is, this is wrong. Suppose that the skills and experience of the individual human test designer is a contributing factor to flaky tests. So if we can uh, document a bunch of flaky tests, we can then try to trace them back to individuals. Some individuals have no involvement, some might have. So we have to measure something called major contributions by whatever that is that can be created by or or that it is uh, uh, that it is uh, lastly modified by or something like that. And then perhaps there are uh, individuals who are responsible for many of the flaky tests 
overrepresented. That would be nice to know. It can become a publication, but the testers would hate it. If we just go into the, the files and check contributions and, and do some correlations, we would simply leave people with the knowledge that individuals are important and there are certain individuals amongst you who perform very bad. No one wants to hear such things, not even researchers. Uh, when we have discussed with testers, we also look a little bit about the testability of the component. So we could, of course, also trace the components and see if they are overrepresented and perhaps their individual designers. And then the developers would hate it too. So what I'm arguing today is that we need some way of going a little bit further and also make people involved and still produce good research. Uh, if we think a bit about the individuals, no person is an island. That was said many years ago, even when, when women were not counted. But uh, today, of course, we do. There can be individual factors. And look at years of education, years in profession, how long they've been in the same position at the company. We saw in, in projects I've been part of earlier that uh, one, one explanation in the 90s was that we had this financial crisis, which meant that people didn't change job. And the quality increased a lot when measuring on a gross scale in products that I got in contact with. Uh, there can be organizational factors. We can, <coughs> we can perhaps find that there are teams with a high amount of uh, <coughs> flaky tests or projects. We can look at the time to deadline. If perhaps the person that was responsible for so many flaky tests actually was a hero. It might be that they had a very short time to deadline and uh, members <coughs> of the team were sick and that person actually produced a lot of tests, including a few mistakes. So maybe it was definitely not bad behavior in any sense or anyone to blame. There are, of course, also responsibilities for, <coughs> for the management to make sure that people have the right training, the incentive structures, the work environment and other things that need also can pinpoint why certain individuals might perform better or worse. So my idea of a project set up like this in Software Center would be that we try to cooperate so we have researchers and we have testers and developers. And what I found in earlier projects is that if we can have some kind of liaison in between, that would be a very great thing to overcome the barriers that might otherwise unnecessarily be created. A liaison would be a very trusted person amongst the testers and developers, an expert, uh, a manager or, <clears throat> or another good contact person that they can trust. It also is a person that uh, has a high integrity and can say no to researchers. You can't measure this. Forget that. And um, so the liaison might start by having some information, discussion among testers and developers. They are probably very curious too. So, and they might have ideas or wishes for how to measure things and how data will be counted and such things. Uh, that is then fell back from the liaison to the, to the researchers' ideas, data, and back come instructions of how to do the measurements and other things if the researchers are not allowed on some kind of anonymous uh, check of the state themselves. Uh, then we continue. The researchers feed back the results to the liaison, who then has the feedback, uh, who gives the feedback to the testers and developers. And uh, th that's also because the liaison is experienced and know for how people will receive and can react on things. Uh, I was working, for instance, in a project <coughs> that, that, that's almost 20 years ago, but 
we were measuring uh, the performance of individual modules in in customer settings and uh, we found a lot of faults or bad behavior amongst uh, that the designers have made they underestimate the traffic on certain certain lines and um, sometimes they had loop over an over an interface <clears throat> so there were a lot of unnecessary calls to e external components in the product that was not good and uh, i was actually present sitting very quiet as a mouse in the corner uh, when there was a feedback session and that was a very open discussion and and uh, they had a good atmosphere and the liaison was very uh, very determined well this is not not so good <laughs> and uh, they adopted it yes i understand yeah, we should have done that no problem at all uh, sorry wrong direction but there will also be questions and ideas okay you measured this but have you investigated this what about if if we had taken this into account and there comes the refined model uh, coming back and maybe we have started getting good trust and things so that researchers can be present uh, and discuss openly but i think it's you have to be very certain if you do that i think the way of working with the liaison is an explaining factor of why things go better than others. Uh, then it's very important to do a second round because uh, then, then you have the models, you have found some ideas of how to, uh, how to manage these things. Maybe it's more education, maybe it is as simple as testers and developers need to talk to each other. There might be a lot of very easy explanations and uh, that's why a second round is good we did so in a metrics project a couple of years ago where we went back to the developers and said this is what we have found what do you think about our model and they said mm, not bad but we would like to measure this instead it's easy for us to measure it has a meaning for us and so on so then we managed to adjust and uh, do something that was good also for for the employers, employees, not only, not only just writing a paper. So with this kind of cooperation that builds very much upon trust, you get relevant knowledge, uh, all the low hanging fruits are taken care of. So that means it's a larger challenge for the researchers, but we get further to the truth of actually depicting bad quality of test code. You have the involvement of employees. That is very good. If they listen, they are willing to share. We can do well-designed remedies that actually work. Instead of being abstract, there is a lot of literature describing what testers should know, but um, we don't know if they, how they then are designed and, and, uh, and used and evaluated. The knowledge stays in the company since this work of, <clears throat> of in, including a liaison in, uh, in a leading position of the research means also that they can continue with this and other things. <clears throat> and publication wise, of course, it would be a great advancement to the field if we can shed some light about these things that are not so easily to measure on an open source project. So I will soon stop the recording, but uh, I would like to engage in a discussion about what's your experience in collaboration. Can this be done or do I overcomplicate things? I've heard reactions of both uh, things. And of course, are you interested in running a pilot project and you don't need to decide today? Uh, I will call the representatives of the uh, project number 30 to discuss this a little bit further. Um, in the slides, which I will append on the home page, uh, there are some good reading about test uh, code quality in depth and uh, also on definition of flaky tests that can be a little bit, bit problematic. But uh, I will stop sharing so I